Well, to make you nervous poker players a little more nervous, I'm betting five. Just a minute, Mr. Fields. You can't bet five. You know the rules and the limit. It's only three. All right, chicken. I bet three cents. I'm going to see it. Three. <laughs> well, I'll just see it. What do you got? Queens and a pair of sixes. <laughs> <laughs> Leave your hands off those stuff. I got a pair of kings and a pair of sevens. Ah, don't touch. <laughs> Take a look at that. Hey, wait a minute. You haven't even got a pair there. You got a two, four, six, eight, ten in all different suits. How <laughs> dumb can one get? That's a kangaroo straight. <laughs> straight? How's a kangaroo get in this game? Explain to him, Mr. Field. A kangaroo straight jumps from the deuce to the four to the six to the eight to the ten. A very rare hand. It's a raw hand. I don't know what kind of game this is. Kangaroo straight, two, four, six, eight, ten. All different suits. Don't get excited. Don't get excited. Deal up. Gotta watch this guy. What do you mean, watch me? Well, lend me a couple. Wait a minute. Deal the cards right. Go ahead, cut them. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? Well, let me deal. Go ahead. This is not draw poker. This is five card showdown. You know that's the way I always deal. Yeah. You're not going to draw any cards. The pasteboard's on the table. They're the ones that's going to count. <coughs> See, I told you, you smoking too many cigarettes. <coughs> Lou, do me a favor. Will you get me a glass of water? I'll, I'll, do, I'll do a favor for you. Sure. Well, this is a good chance for me to get a fresh cigar. Well. Fresh out. Have you got a cigar around the house? Oh, yeah, I have. I have one right over here. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, we're all set. Oh, thanks, Lou. <laughs> so better, uh, much better. Much better. Much better. Okay. Well, now let me see. Well, I'll just, uh, I'll just bet three. I'll see your three and raise your three. Look, why don't we cut out the kid stuff? Raise the limit. Let's, let's make, let's bet some real money. Now, wait a minute, what are you trying to do, run a game? Are you trying to pull a game or something? Rules are rules. If you... <laughs> I'm not out of the game. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, let's bet some real house. I'm going to see that bet. I'm going to bet some real money. Ten dollars. Oh, uh, well, that's not bad. I'll see your ten and um, I'll raise it twenty-five. <laughs> this is like stealing dead flies from blind spiders. <laughs> 25, and I'll raise you 50. Fellas, <laughs> don't, 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 let's be, uh, <laughs> don't, don't, let's be partners here. Let's bet some real money. Good, good. I'm going to see your 50. I'm going to see your 50. And I'm going to bet 50 more. I call you a 50 and a 100 more. Okay. I call. <laughs> All right. I'm in. How do you like this? What? Two handsome jacks and three beautiful queens of full house. <laughs> Just a minute, gaze on this pretty picture. Three aces and a pair of gentlemen. Aha! <laughs> What's the matter with you? I got two pairs. 
You got what? Two pair. But that's two pair. Two pair? I've got a full house. I know, but I got two pair. That's for the birds. That doesn't beat these things. These are... Just a minute. Just a minute. I got two pair of twos. Two pair of twos. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll deal them out this time. Let's play table stakes this time, huh? Yes. Want to play table stakes? How do you like that? A cheater. You table stakes. Put it all up. All right. Okay. Put on. it all up. Matches and all. Okay. Table stakes. There we go. <laughs> you ready? tell you that's uh that's only good once in a game oh. only once <laughs> that's all you know use it once in a game From my grandfather, Sourdough Costello, from Alaska. From Alaska? Yeah. Hey, that's the guy you haven't heard from in over 20 years. That's right. Oh, hey! Any gold in the envelope? Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, uh, oh I thought so. Cheapskate. Huh. Cheapskate. I'm gonna go. Go ahead. Uh, uh, what, what, what does he say? What does he say? Yeah. Dear Lewis, we'll be down in your city in a few weeks. I sure look forward to having a nice visit with you and your wife. Your wife? What wife? The, the, the one I've been writing to my grandfather about. Tell him that I was married. You know, you... Yeah, he always said, Abbott, that no girl would ever marry me. Well, uh, wait a minute. Uh, you're in a fine mess. What are you going to tell him when he comes in? He knows you're not married then. How did I know he was coming here? Well, tell him the truth. What's the difference? What's the difference? There's $10,000 difference. He says if I get married, he give me $10,000. Oh, well, wait a minute. That's 10,000 reasons why we've got to find you a wife. Uh -uh. Oh, my God. How about uh, your old flame, Agnes, across the hall? Oh, no, no, Well, no, what's no. the difference for $10,000? Agnes will not talk to me. Ever since she was going with that bone bender Brodsky, she won't talk to me. Oh, well, can't you patch it up? Not as long as she's around that bone bender Brodsky. <laughs> He's murdered. Well, I've got to get you a wife. What are you going to do, pick one off a tree? No, uh, we've got to get a... We'll go around town. We'll comb the town. Hey, if we get down to the carnival and I can't get a wife, maybe I can win myself a cubie doll. Oh, come on, get your hat. Let's go out and look for a wife. Come on. Hey, now there's your chance. Go ahead. Okay, don't Where is your chance? Excuse me, young girl. May I help you? Oh, you certainly can. The darn thing seems to be stuck or something. I must tell the city fathers about this. Would you mind excuse me, please? <laughs> See what I can do for you. Oh. There it is. How's that? Thank you. Uh, one more? Yes, please. Go ahead. Mm. Would you turn it up, please? Yeah, get, get, get it. Get it. I'm turning. I'm turning. Can I make it? A little more. A little more. You're a fine dumb cluck. You should have worked out. I said you were no perfect setup with a gorgeous little woman. And what happens? Water coming out. Why, that was like opening up the floodgates of Boulder Dam. Well, I tried to give it to I turned it. I didn't know I was coming out of uh, shit like that. Uh, any two-year-old kid could do this. <laughs> Sent for a two-year-old kid. <laughs> oh, you trombone, you crook. I thought first. Here I go. Go ahead. <laughs> girls, girls. Oh, please, girls. I'm ashamed of two beautiful, pretty girls like you having a brawl right here on the street. You're sweet. Will you help me? She's trying to grab my trombone. She's nuts. It's mine. Oh, girls, let lover boys straighten out this quarrel. Here. There's half for you and half for you. You wrecked it. Oh, it's ruined. 
Patience, that's all. Look, I'll tell you what you do. The next one comes along, try this. Try. Try. Oh, give me the drop the of a Miss Nancy Dixon, Mesa City, Iowa. That might be the one. Now that you know her address, you know her name, go up and ring the bell. Are you sure that this is going to be in the bag? Treat her like a long lost sister. Go ahead up there. Treat her like a long lost sister. Well, what's the difference? You, you know, know what I'm I mean. a boy. I know that. We're going up there. Treat her like a long lost cop. That a boy. Put it right on. Put on that car. Oh, no, no, no. We don't take it easy. <laughs> yes? How do you do? Are you Miss Nancy Dixon? Yes. Of the Mason Dixons? Why, you must be Cousin Elma from Iowa. Cousin Elma! Oh! I... I... Why, Aunt Emma wrote and told me you were coming. Oh, Elma, after all these years, I'm so thrilled to meet you. Uh, Why, you're so handsome. Mm. And a boy, Costello, we're in. Elma, I'm being so rude, darling. Come in, I'm so excited. But, 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 but I, I mean, I, mean I, I think you made a slight mistake. I mean, I'm not your cousin, Elma. You're I'm... not my cousin, Elma. No, I'm Lou Costello. Why, you imposter. How dare you come to my door and lie like that. Would you all pardon me for a moment, please? Oh, I'd be delighted. I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I hey, wait a minute. A manna from heaven. Now, I want you to go over there and act like Sir Walter Raleigh. How can I act like him? I don't even know the guy. Oh, stop. He's been dead for 300 years. Oh, you want me to act dead? No, certainly not. He was very courteous to the women. He used to take his coat off and spread it on a puddle of water so the ladies could step on it and not get their little tootsies wet. Are you kidding? Sure. He used to take his coat off and put it in a puddle of water so he can walk over it? Yes. But she'll swoon right at your feet. Go ahead. Try that. Atta boy. How are you doing? Brave pretty maiden, don't worry your cute little head. I will have you safely across in a jiffy. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Now, you just a on it. I never saw such a... You and your Sir Walter Roller ought to take distance. What? You slapped me in the face of his head. Hey, Lou. I think we'll save time if we split up. Now, I'll get down the street here and look for a girl for you. You look around the amusement park. Okay. I'll give some lucky girl one more chance. If she gives me the brush off, I'm going home. All right, look, Lou. If you fail, don't worry. I'll bring home the bacon. Now, don't think I'm going to get tied up with a piece of bacon. Will you go and look around the amusement park? Come on. Hey, uh, folks, hey, uh, step right up and find romance as you drift through Spooner's Heaven. Step right up here, folks. Thank you. Well, uh, what's a pretty girl like you doing around here without a boyfriend? I've been whistled at and been the victim of wolf calls all day. Now, I just want a nice place where it's peaceful and quiet and no dime store Romeo. Well, lady, you've come to the right place. Now, if you'll just step right over here, please, and sit down. Thank you very much. Ah, a new customer. How do you do, sir? Step right there in the second seat. Hey, uh, folks, a trip to romance. Step right up here, folks, a trip to romance. Well, I guess... Here we go.
Has that Mike the Cup been beating you up again? Oh, no, Abbott. I'm in love. No, I, I love know. everybody. You, you met that wrestler, didn't you? Oh, no. I met Agnes. And she spoke to me. Huh? She spoke to me, Agnes. Uh, uh, Agnes, you... Agnes. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, Abbott, I don't care what gets me right now. I'm so in love. I met Agnes coming in the front way with a lot of bundles, and she dropped one, and I stooped down to pick it up, and I handed it to her very gently. You know what she did? See? She smiled at me. So what? So what? She invited me over to her place later. Uh, what about that uh, wrestling friend of hers? Oh, boom. Ben Dabrowski? Yeah, watch out. He got so jealous around her that she told him that she'd give him the bounce if he didn't get away. Hey. And not only that, he, he's not allowed to call her up anymore. I think I'm in. I love Agnes. I love Agnes. Wait, wait, wait. Agnes is loving me. Wait a minute, boy. Tonight you're going over and pay a visit to Agnes. And then what? Then what? Yeah. You're going to pour on that charm of yours. Flatter her. Tell her beautiful little things that comes to your mind. And when you get her in the palm of your hand, you propose to her, propose marriage to her. Oh, I couldn't do that, bud. Why not? I, I'm not in front of Agnes. I wouldn't know what to say. I'd get all mixed up. Have you still got that uh, engagement ring that you bought uh, and was ashamed to give to Agnes? I still got it. You still got it? I still got it in hopes of some girl saying yes. Before she bats my brains out, I'd put on her finger. And you've got nothing to worry about. <laughs> You'll slip that on her finger before the night is over. I'll be right back. I'm in love. I'm in love with Agnes, my darling. Oh, my to relax a little bit. Nice <laughs> to lovers by faith delight. Baby, do I need you? What help I need? Get a load of this. Dear Mr. Bashful. There are many ways of proposing to a girl, but if you follow the pattern I'm outlining for you, I am sure you cannot fail. This is hot stuff. This is the real McCoy. This is what I need. It is easy. This is a load of some good-looking words. Let me try this. Agnes, do you think you could ever fall in love? Oh. Maybe, Lewis. <laughs> Would you like to fall in love? Oh, perhaps. <laughs> Agnes, could you love a fellow like me? Possibly. Do you like me a little? <laughs> oh, yes, honey boy. I like you a lot. <laughs> Agnes, will you dance with me? <laughs> of course, Louis. I'll dance with you. Thanks, Agnes. Uh, thanks, Agnes. Uh, thanks, Agnes. Thanks, Agnes. Thanks, Agnes. What's the matter, thanks. With you? What's the matter? You better cut out this nonsense with girls. I heard what happened to you at Spooner's Heaven. What are you up to, Costello? Oh, I'm just trying to make a proposal. <laughs> Forget about this kind of nonsense and junk. Why don't you just come out and ask the... Who is this unlucky girl? Agnes. Agnes? Oh, ho, ho. when Bone Bender Brodsky hears about this, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. Oh. Let me tell you something, Mr. Fields. I don't care about that Bone Bender Brodsky. You know what I would do with that guy? If I was... I would take that Bone Bender Brodsky and I, I'd take him like this and I'd, I'd split him, I'd crack him. He would... <coughs> He wouldn't have a chance with me, that, that fellow, he wouldn't have a chance with me. You'd just break him in half, wouldn't you? <laughs> you see, Mr. Fields, Ooh. that's why I'm not strong. I, I'm not strong to ask Custom. anything to anybody. Or... You don't have to be strong. Nobody in the world could refuse you if you put your heart into it. Just I... say, will you marry me? Will you marry me? No, you're the ugliest thing I've ever laid my eyes on. Come in. Agnes, I... Come in, Lou. Agnes, I didn't know you had company. Oh, that's just a dummy I borrowed from the store. Well, I'll see you later. Tell your friend to get more clothes on. I'm embarrassed. Oh, come on in, Lou. Sit down, relax, Lou. Excuse me while I turn off my iron in the kitchen. Thank you, Agnes.
Agnes, do you ever think you could fall in love with me? Maybe. <laughs> Would you like to fall in love? Perhaps. I think I got this thing pretty good. Just to make sure. I don't want to fluff up here with this thing. This is just like old times, Lou. Oh, gee, Agnes. I, all that time that you and I haven't been talking, I was miserable. I never even looked at another girl. We never should have quarreled in the first place. It was all my fault. If I hadn't gone gaga over that muscle-bound wrestler, we would never have had a spat. Whatever happened to that bone bender? Oh, he still hangs around trying to date me. But in my book, he's all washed up. You don't like him? No, I should say not. He thinks he's big stuff, always bragging about what he'll do to anyone who tries to take me away from him. Let's not talk about that old windbag. You said it. He's a dead duck. Agnes, I'm going to ask you something. You won't get mad at me, will you? Of course not, Lou. Do you think you could ever fall in love with me? But, Lou, I have. Agnes, oh, Agnes, not in front of your friend. Oh, Lou, I'm so happy. There'll never be anyone else in my life but you. I got a surprise for you. Honest. Shut your eyes. Close them tight. This is going to do it, Agnes. Give me your hand. It's the proudest moment of my life. Can I look? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Go ahead, wait. open your eyes and look. What is it? <laughs> I don't know what it is. What is it? Just turn it around and I'll tell you. Turn it a little more. Just a little. Hold it, hold it. You went past it. You went past it. That's got it. That's got it. Boy, is that a beauty? Take a look at it, Agnes. Oh, Lou, it's beautiful. <laughs> Say that again. It's beautiful. Bender Brodsky. So, while the rat's away, the mice you play. Just a minute, Mr. Bone Bender. Don't misinterpret this situation. I only come over to ask Agnes for some powders for my headache. And will you need it? Well, tell him the truth, Lou. Tell him that we love each other. You tell him. If I tell him, he'll kill me. You're so right. That's what I said. Oh, no, no, no. Your grandfather's not coming here after all. 
He's been called back to Alaska on business. So what? Well, so what? Now he don't have to get married for the $10,000. So that's why you decided to marry me all of a sudden, you conniving Give me back my ring. Give me back my ring. Well, honey, do something. Give me back my ring. Give me back my ring. 